German football legend, an outstanding striker who, as chairman of the executive board, today calls the shots at Bayern München, Karl Heinz Rummenigge. I always say I've been connected with Bayern München for over 40 years, but the best times I experienced here were as a player. It all began when he was just 19 years old. The young man from Lippstadt received the offer of a lifetime. If you get an offer from Bayern, you go to Bayern. I still tell the players that today. The beginning of an exceptional career and reaching a pinnacle in 1980. We won the Bundesliga with Bayern, I was top scorer, then a European champion with Germany, and then European Footballer of the Year. That was probably the most successful year of my career. A great German footballer who, in his second career, established Bayern München as one of the biggest clubs in the world. Now we have a turnover of some 600 million euros. The whole club has taken off, especially in the last five, six, seven years. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, a German football legend who achieved extraordinary things with Bayern as a player and as chairman of the board. I always say I've been connected with Bayern München for over 40 years, but the best times I experienced here were as a player. Everything I do now is wonderful, it's fun. You keep lots of wheels turning, but the best time was still out on the pitch. It's just the game. You live the game, the joy, and at the end of the day, to be clear, it's all about what happens on the pitch, not off it. At only 19, he made his breakthrough at Bayern, playing in 21 league games in his first season. Though his career was taking off quickly, the offer had come as a surprise from the young man from Lippstadt. I'd already noticed that I was better than the others in some ways. The supporters used to say to me after the match, you have to train, you have to train. You've got the chance to make it as a professional. But there's no apprenticeship or university degree for a career as a professional footballer. And honestly, I have to say, I was taken by surprise. I don't think I was 18 when the inquiry came from Munich about going to Bayern München. To Bayern München to wechseln, das war schon... It was like a storm breaking in our home. And suddenly, the whole family was in uproar. In Lipstadt, Westphalia, the young Karl-Heinz Rummenigge played with Borussia Lipstadt. His greatest success, 16 goals in an under-14s game. The beginning of a career which would be honed to perfection in Munich. It felt like the other side of the world, 600 kilometers. At first, my mother really didn't want me to leave home. I had quite a few offers, including nearer to Lippstadt, Schalke, Dortmund. I think I had 14 offers from the whole Bundesliga. But strangely enough, the first was Bayern München. I was a bit dazed by it all, of course. The Bayern team already had some top quality players at the time. So what do I do now? Every one of my friends and acquaintances told me, you know you'll never get to kick a ball there because they're just too good. So I asked my coach and he said, if you have an offer from Bayern, you go to Bayern. I tell that story to many players that we might want to bring here today. And I say to them, what I did then, you can do now. Awaiting him in Munich was a team of superstars such as Franz Beckenbauer, Gerd Müller and Sepp Meyer a team that already had several Bundesliga titles to its name and had just won the European Cup. I had the good fortune to get into this great team when I started. The spine was well established, Sepp, Franz, Gerd. Alongside them, there were other great players and yet I was allowed to play with them. I learnt a lot. I didn't really talk much, always kept my eyes and ears open and watched what the others were doing. Franz Beckenbauer was a great role model in many respects. Uli Hoeneß had already moved upstairs to the business side at that time. Gerd Müller was a popular character because he really cared about his colleagues and the team spirit. It was impossible not to learn. You just had to go with the flow. And fortunately, they always let you go with the flow. But this legendary team was aging and a process of renewal had to be initiated. 
The youngsters looked up to us and we needed them. That cohesion couldn't have been better. There was a time in the mid-1970s when the boys realized, hey, we can actually get more out of this than just being a member of the team. Then they tried to challenge the older players a bit more. And of course, we responded to this challenge. Then, after one match, Franz Beckenbauer was asked what the future held for Bayern. The team was no longer sparkling fresh. Many players were over 30. Who'd carry it on? He gave a forthright response, as was always the case with France. There's someone here. He can certainly shoot. He has the quality, but he's a bit of a prat. That statement was all the motivation Rummenigge needed at the time. I've often gone back over this scene again with Franz, and he always says, yes, that's right, I can just about remember it, I must apologize. And I say, no, you don't have to apologize. You gave my career a boost saying that, because my pride was hurt, and I thought to myself, right, I'll show him. The 14th of September 1974, the Olympic Stadium, Bayern against Köln. Yes, my first goal as a Bundesliga player. I'll never forget that. And in the Olympic Stadium against Köln, I couldn't miss. I was one and a half meters in front of goal and could just nod it in. But on Monday, when the newspapers came out, I bought the whole lot up from the kiosk and sent them to Lipstadt, all the newspapers. Rummenigge's good start in Munich was in contrast to Bayern's mini-crisis on the national stage, something we might forget in this day and age. Schlagzeilen aus dieser Zeit. Sie sind ein Spiegelbild der oft widersprüchlichen Gefühle. Internationale Erfolge wurden in ganz Deutschland bejubelt, nationale Misserfolge eher beklatscht. Der Erfolg hat sie arrogant gemacht, so war der Tenor. From the beginning of 1975, this problem was to be tackled by Detmar Kramer, especially through the integration of young players. I've been of the opinion for 15 years that a team needs to absorb one or two young players every year. But that means bringing a coach with a well-established team that achieves great successes every season to the point where he will bring in one or two youngsters each year and drop some of his most experienced players. Karma fittingly led the club to win the European Cup again on its 75th anniversary. But in the Bundesliga, Bayern could only finish 10th. This team couldn't cope with the daily routine of the Bundesliga. It was all about the big occasions. But on those big occasions, the team was always really focused. I used to say that as soon as the floodlights were switched on for European Cup matches, we were highly motivated, focused and often won. But by 77 it was all over, and then there was a gap of several years where we had no success at all. It's always the players with strong personalities that influence the game around them and the way the team plays. The ones that determine the system and the style of a team. And at Bayern München, of course, we're talking about Franz Beckenbauer, and Gerd Müller, but also players like Sepp Meyer, Schwarzenbeck, Hoeneß when he comes back. We now also have some younger players who have played their way into contention, particularly Dürnberger and Rummenigge. Other players have also come through. This is a process that takes time. Good things take time, and patience is a virtue. Not everyone in Munich was a fan of Detmar Kramer's sober manner. But this globetrotter, who had previously worked as a FIFA coach in over 70 countries worldwide, had a particularly great belief in the young striker Rummenigge and turned him into a leader on the pitch. He was important for me. He arrived in 1975. Udo Latek was unfortunately released in the winter. Kramer took over from him and of course, I have to say, he was a godsend for me. He not only challenged me, but also gave me a lot of encouragement. 
He recognized my talent and encouraged it to the full. He was my guiding light in every respect. Karma won two European Cups with Bayern and the Intercontinental Cup in 1976. His former protégé Rummenigge has vivid memories of this coach. Without Detmar Kramer, I certainly wouldn't have had the playing career I did. There's something else important too, something that people tend to forget a little bit these days. He was a football teacher. He was also a teacher for us. He often invited the young players to dinner at an Italian restaurant and then shared his incredible wealth of stories. He'd experienced so much. Lion hunting in the jungle with Idi Amin, for example. I can't imagine what he's been through. They were gripping stories and the next day we got back to business on the pitch he was almost like a second father i have to say because he was very important to me off the pitch as well however as bundesliga success was not forthcoming under karma either first Jula loran and then his former assistant pal chernai took on the head coaching job at bayern under the latter national success returned rummenigge's memories of him very good. He was a very good coach, especially in terms of tactics. He was assistant coach to Jula Laurent, who was in the role before him. Then, when Laurent was sacked, he took over. He was a major exponent of zonal marking in Germany back then. In that space. Don't leave so much space. Somebody stay there, a man in the gap. This new system also benefited attacking players like Rummenigge. Well, in my first few years here, I often played outside left or right. From there, the defender would even follow you to the toilet if you had to go at half time. With Chennai, zonal marking gradually became more and more important in Germany. It was a proper revolution in German football back then when he introduced it here at Bayern. And it was no wonder we went on to win the championship in 80 and 81 under him, following a six-year break. He was an important factor for Bayern München, and he put a lot into the club. The 60. minute. Ein abgefälschter Schuss, wieder von Horstmann. Und keine Chance für Rodi. Another success factor, the youngest general manager in the Bundesliga, Rummenigge's former teammate. Then Uli Hoeneß came in as manager. Straight away, Hoeneß made a couple of good signings in his first year. The year before, Paul Breitner had returned. Money was a bit tight at that time. Back then, Bayern had debts of 7.5 million marks, with 15 million marks turnover. These pieces of the puzzle, plus the league's top scorer, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, who scored 26 goals, led Bayern to becoming German champions in 1980. Rummenigge's first Bundesliga title. We got our impetus back, first with Paul, then with Uli. So things got off to a good start in the 80s. We won the Bundesliga twice in a row, and this gave us a huge boost for the international stage too. The 1979-80 season was a turning point for Rummenigge and Bayern München. The Bundesliga was only decided in Bayern's favour on the last day of the season, with a 2-1 win over Eintracht Braunschweig at the Olympic Stadium, thanks to goals from Rummenigge and his perfect partner, Paul Breitner. Bayern were laying the foundations for a great future. to celebrate the goalposts were ceremoniously dismantled and paraded around the stadium. Yes, we were nicknamed Breitniger. The word emerged as a combination of Breitner and Rummenigge. 
He provided super assists for me. People of Munich. Bayern are the 1980 German champions. Congratulations. Whenever he had the ball, he always looked for me. I then tried to make the runs. I was lucky enough to be relatively fast and good at dribbling. Once I was half a metre ahead of the defender, it was difficult for him to catch me again. That worked wonderfully well. He played the long ball, and once I got going, it wasn't so easy for the other guy. Munich in celebratory mood. Finally, the longed-for championship trophy was back in the Bavarian capital. Memories of the championship party. Let's go, and cheers. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, that was the 1980 championship after a six-year break. At that point, I'd already had a glass or two of champagne too many. But we had a great evening, I can tell you that. Really enjoyed ourselves. One of those wonderful evenings. I'd say that was the beginning of a new stable era that has stayed with Bayern right up to today. The foundations were laid by this period of stability in the 80s, with one title after another. Of course, there were always teams that tried to challenge us. In the 80s, it was Hamburg, a club on the up back then. At times, Werder Bremen or Mönchengladbach or even Borussia Dortmund. But fortunately, Bayern München were always up there in the top two or three. In the summer after his first championship, Rummenigge travelled with the national team to the European Championship in Italy. In the final against Belgium, he set up Horst Horbesch's winning goal. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge at his peak. Yes, that was perhaps my best year, 1980. We won the Bundesliga with Bayern. I was top scorer, then a European champion with Germany and even European footballer of the year. This was probably the most successful year of my career. I really took off, not only nationally, but also internationally. That was a good time. The time was so good that perhaps it also went a little to his head. Like for the goal of the month in July 1981, in a friendly match against Bruges. Walter Eschweiler was the referee. It wasn't a very sporting thing to do, and he rightly gave me the yellow card for doing it. You can't score goals like that anymore. I think there'd be three defenders chopping your legs from behind before you'd score a goal like that. But you know what Eschweiler said to me? Hey, Kalle, we don't do that here. Then I said, Walter, I apologize. Then he said, OK, accepted. But I'm going to have to give you a yellow card anyway. During the winter break in 1984, rumors grew about a transfer for Rummenigge. At the time, the star of the Bayern team was hot property internationally, having been the Bundesliga's top scorer for the third time. Well, I was totally established here. I was captain of the team. The team was successful. When I left in 1984, we managed to win the cup. In the Bundesliga, we were one point behind Stuttgart, and they won the title that year. Everything was good. I had friends all around me here. It was all wonderful, but I had the feeling that I wanted to do something new again towards the end of my career. I was just under 29 at the time. It was my last chance to make a move. Inter Milan came calling, and Kala answered, ultimately understandable, even for the Munich fans. Also, um, if I had a chance like that, I'd be off for that money. Just imagine, he'll even get a servant. I'd be off for that as well. The Italians couldn't wait for Rummenigge's arrival. Especially with so few goals in Syria, the German striker gave them cause for optimism. The 11 million mark transfer fee was the second highest paid to date, 
exceeded only by Diego Maradona. Rummenigge is a world-class player, but the money they're paying for him now is just beyond all reason, even for a star like him. After all, he's not that young anymore. Let's say it was in everyone's interests. I'm not making any secret of it either. Today, players say, I want to learn another foreign language. At that time, we wanted to earn money. I'll make no secret of it. What Karl-Heinz Rummenigge lacked in his outstanding career was the World Cup. Twice he was the captain in the final, and twice West Germany failed. He played a strong tournament at the 1982 World Cup Finals in Spain and scored five goals. But the final against Italy was a disappointment all round. Rummenigge had to be replaced after 70 minutes, and Italy convincingly defeated Germany 3-1. Rummenigge was voted the third best player of the tournament. Yes, it was a great time, even without winning the World Cup, but it was the only title I hadn't managed to win. When I think about the finals in Spain now, I'd say we had no chance in Madrid. We were tired after the semi-final against France. Extra time, penalty shootout, only got back home to Madrid very late. They were physically just much stronger than we were. And the Italians were on a great run. They were lucky to get through the group stage, but after that it all clicked. And then, let's face it, they fully deserved to win the final 3-1. It was a bit different in Mexico City. Under his former teammate Franz Beckenbauer as team boss, Rummenigge led the team onto the field for the last time. A spectacular final that ended in bitter disappointment. It's a defeat that still haunts him today. It was 2-0 for Argentina. It looked like they had the game won. Then there were two corners. I scored from the first and Rudy Fuller from the second. Suddenly it was 2-2 and the whole game was turned on its head. You could suddenly see the Argentines were worried, nervous. They knew that physically the Germans had got their second win, and then we made a tactical mistake and we lost it. But that was my last international, and I'll never forget it, because it was such a wonderful experience. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, an outstanding player and Bundesliga legend, with 162 goals in 310 games. A boy from Lippstadt, who, at Bayern München, became one of the world's biggest stars. On the pitch, the good Lord had given me the talent but I had no preparation at all for what went on off the pitch from 91 onwards. I grew into the job, but I had the big advantage of just being a vice president and not fully responsible for the club right from the start. So I was able to develop. In 1991, the then president, Franz Scherer, made former players Beckenbauer and Rummenigge vice presidents of the club. The respective tasks were clearly defined. The general job description was foreign minister. I spent a lot of time building up networks. I went to meet associations like UEFA, FIFA and other clubs. I did lots of travelling, looked at the junior section at Ajax Amsterdam, the sponsorship department at Manchester United. And over time, Hernes Beckenbauer and Rummenigge took the club to a completely new level at the top of worldwide professional football. The development we've gone through here is really rapid. When I came here as a player, we had turnover of 12 million Deutschmarks and there were maybe 15 employees besides the players. Today, Bayern München is a joint stock company and one of the largest football clubs in the world. Turnover is now some 600 million euros, and we've many times the number of employees we had then. The whole club has really taken off, especially in the last five, six or seven years. 
We've had incredible success on the pitch, fortunately, accompanied by very healthy years on the business side. And Bayern has achieved this with their Mir San Mir, we are who we are approach, but always with an almost family type mentality. This is the club's greatest achievement here. The fact that in this conglomerate, where other clubs have Arab, American and Chinese owners, this club has maintained some independence. Of course, not without a degree of turmoil, but we have managed to set up this successful structure. And everyone in Munich knows only too well that the former striker and current chairman and CEO Rummenigge has played a major role in achieving this. Thank you. You can always make preparations off the pitch, but what happens on the pitch is decisive. It's this game, the feeling you get when you score a goal in front of 70, 80,000 spectators. Whatever else you do, transfers or signing sponsorship contracts, it's all well and good, but no substitute for scoring a goal in front of 70, 80,000 people. That's because Karl-Heinz Rummenigge is, one thing above all else, a footballer through and through, one of the best strikers in the history of the Bundesliga and someone who simply loves the game.